Allah. La ilaha illallah. Wa alayha illallah. High in the Atlas Mountains in western Algeria, a military camp run by the Army of Islamic Salvation. Wa fi sabiliha nujahid. Wa fi sabiliha nujahid. These men believe that they are the rightful rulers of Algeria. Wa fi sabiliha nujahid. The party for the election was three years ago, but the government refused to accept the result. Since then, the two sides have fought a brutal war. At least 20,000 have perished. Algeria has been traumatized. A year ago, Islamic militants warned foreigners to leave or face immediate death. More than 60 have been murdered. Seven Italians had their throats slit while they slept. The capital, Algiers, is under nighttime curfew. Three hundred people a week are dying in the struggle for power. Both government forces and Islamic militants use intimidation and murder to further their aims. Many live in hiding, moving from one safe house to another. It's a war that's fought in the shadows where police wear masks and brother does not trust brother. It's a conflict that until now has been hidden from the outside world. Family remembers Katya, a 16-year-old girl murdered for not wearing an Islamic veil. She was gunned down a few meters from her home as she returned from school. Just before she died, Islamic militants had issued an ultimatum to local women. At first, Katya's father had wanted her to wear the veil for her own safety. Bien avant l'assassinat de Katia, on, a déjà, je, on avait déjà appréhendu cette fatalité. C'est des boyaux euh, qui, qui se mettent euh, à, côté, à côté des magasins. À chaque fois quand elles elle passent, ils il leur disaient, il leur disait, si, vous, si, si vous portez pas le, le, le hijab, on va, on va vous tuer. In the end, the family decided to stand up to the militants. They ignored the threats. To the Islamic extremists, Katia represented values brought to Algeria from the West. Many of her friends, including the girl who was with her when she died, had now begun to wear a veil. Bon, ça c'est l'été à côté de Katia. Après, il s'est eu ça d'arrosant. Après, il a fait signe de main caïnia. Elle, elle est partie en courant. Katia, il a tiré dessus. Un mois et demi, vous avez vu ça. Un mois et demi. Quel char. Like thousands of other Algerians, Katia was caught in a conflict that was not of her making. Police recruits outside Algiers. The length of the training program has been hard to put more policemen on the streets and to replace those who've died. Policemen have suffered the brunt of the attacks by the Islamic militants. Several thousand have been murdered. Many in small, vulnerable stations were killed for their weapons. The Jabari family have had links with the police force for decades, 
and now they've paid the price. Both of Majid Jabari's daughters have been widowed. Most recently, Panya, herself a policewoman in a passport office. Her husband was shot on his way to work. What makes such murders so horrific in these tightly knit communities is that most of the victims know their killers. Il a touché la main, il lui a dit bonjour, ils se sont assis carrément derrière lui. Au moment où le, bu, le minibus allait démarrer, les deux ont sorti deux pistolets et ils l'ont tiré sur la, à la tête. Ils l'ont tué à l'intérieur. Ils l'ont désarmé et jeté par la porte sur le trottoir. Jabari lives outside the capital, Algiers, near the town of Blida. Blida is a stronghold of the militants. It's where the Islamic revolt began. Most who live here can't openly oppose the fundamentalists. They believe they can't be protected. There's an all-consuming distrust. The enemy is invisible. They're going to the rue, they're going to the rue. Ils sont livrés à eux-mêmes, marcher, regarder les gens, tourner, retourner, avec le doute que je suis suivi, que quelqu'un va me... On n'ose même pas dire bonjour à quelqu'un. Mais là, on ne connaît pas notre ami. Il peut être le voisin, il peut être le cousin, il peut être le frère, il peut être le, le gars du quartier. Peut... On est guetté de partout. French language newspapers are now sold only by street vendors who leave before nightfall. Islamic militants ordered shops to stop selling them. Cigarettes are no longer sold in kiosks. Some have shut rather than face the constant intimidation. Le peuple algérien est tellement traumatisé que, avec toutes ces tueries qu'il y a, ils se sentent comme si qu'ils sont sans sécurité. C'est pour cela que le terrorisme a pris de l'ampleur. Vous voyez que sous scène nord quelconque qui est donné dans n'importe quel quartier où on interdit la vente des journaux, où on interdit aux gens de fumer, où on interdit la parabolique, tout le monde passe à l'exécution. Every day, there are several dozen attacks by Islamic militants. More than 600 schools have been destroyed. A group of hooded men set fire to six classrooms at the Buaria Middle School on the outskirts of Blida. Under the protection of the army, the remaining children go to school. It's a battle for control of the education system. Islamic groups have banned the teaching of French, music and sport for girls. Many teachers have refused to go to school. The insurgency has brought the army directly into the daily lives of Algerians living in towns such as Blida. And as so often happens, whole communities are drawn into a counter-terrorist campaign.
Three years ago, the security forces were told by their military leaders to destroy the radical Islamic movement. But the cost to Algerian society has been great, the collapse of the criminal justice system. The police, fearing for their own safety, see suspects everywhere. This man's number plate was from another district. Tens of thousands have been arrested using emergency powers, necessary, says the government, because of the scale of the insurrection. But it left no safeguard for the rights of defendants. As the intensity of the violence increases, the tactics of the police and the militants have converged. People, they come to see us saying, my son or my brother has been taken a week ago. We don't know where he is. We wait for two weeks, three weeks, sometimes a month, two months. And he is not brought before the court. When we see he's in the court, we go and see them in prison. And a lot of them, we see the effect of torture in their body. They are burned. We can see the chain in their hands. We can see the, the torture still on their body. Side leader, police undergo anti-terrorist training. It's a mock attack on a militant hideout in the mountains. These policemen who patrol the countryside are told that any person in a field is a potential terrorist. Their uncompromising stance has in some cases led to summary executions. C'est la nuit, bien sûr c'est le couvre-feu, tout le monde dormait à la maison et après on a entendu des, des coups. Et après il m'a dit il vaut mieux aller calmer les enfants dans la chambre, moi je vais ouvrir. Et quand il est parti pour ouvrir, euh, avant même d'atteindre le seuil de la porte, la porte s'est cassée. Alors, coup de pied. Elle s'est cassée et mon mari, euh, il était debout devant la porte, les mains en l'air, parce qu'il avait, il il avait bien sûr imaginé que ce n'était pas des policiers. Il a mis les mains en l'air et, et on lui a tiré dessus. On lui a tiré dessus sans savoir même qui c'était. Ils lui ont tiré la première balle sous son aisselle, vu qu'il avait les mains en l'air, et la deuxième balle en plein cœur. Il est tombé sur le divan et bien sûr, je n'arrivais pas à réaliser si j'étais en train de dormir, de rêver ou de faire un cauchemar ou quoi que ce soit. Je n'ai pas pu réagir, je ne savais pas quoi faire. Et après, le policier m'a dit euh, qui c'est cet homme. Bien sûr, après avoir tiré, il voulait savoir son nom. Moussaoui a six children. Son husband était un accountant. As he lay dying, the police refused to take him to hospital. Je dis, mais il fallait au moins faire une enquête, parce que dire que venir tuer quelqu'un et dire que c'est un terroriste, c'est une accusation gratuite, tout le monde peut faire ça, c'est pas, pas une justification. Alors ils m'ont dit, euh, on n'est pas venu pour faire une enquête, on est venu pour tuer. Ils ont attendu dehors, jusqu'à ce qu'il soit éteint complètement, parce que j'ai vu qu'il allait mourir, il a perdu tout son sang. Je lui ferme les yeux et je suis couvert et il est mort. Ah. Et après ils sont venus l'emmener. Depuis je ne l'ai plus refusé. Je ne sais pas s'ils si, si l'ont enterré ou la... je ne sais pas ce qu'ils ont fait. Ils m'ont dit si la loi, vous n'avez pas le droit de le voir, vous n'avez pas le droit de l'enterrer, c'est un terroriste. Si tu le vois. Poor parts of Algiers, like the Kasbah, are now no-go areas for outsiders. It's a community divided. 
And where a father is killed by the security forces, there is a mother or a son who supports the Islamic movement. It was in these alleys that the French colonial power fought the Algerian independence movement 40 years ago. A similar cycle of brutality is now complete. Once again, a killing on either side raises the savagery. They are traumatized, the Algerians, yes. Independent of my affair, they are traumatized. The people don't have to open the door. When you hit them, they don't have confidence to open the door. They are traumatized. They are malades. 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 They are traumatized. It's not anything. It's not anything, all that. Mon fils, ils l'ont tué alors qu'il était chez lui en train de dormir. Mais sa bouche, elle a fait d'un clash, ou là, sa bouche, elle fait cacher. Sa bouche, fait d'un roi, elle a The party was banned. Supporters who were not arrested fled from their homes to the mountains. Algeria lies less than 150 miles from the coast of southern Europe. Its major cities like Algiers are still functioning despite the growing economic hardship and fear of attack. The militants have their bases in the mountains which surround the major cities. It's ideal terrain for rebellion. Assignment's journey to a guerrilla camp began by traveling to Blida. Despite being an Islamic stronghold, Blida is heavily policed. The town is surrounded by checkpoints. But on the 100-mile drive west on one of Algeria's main highways, there was no sign of a government presence. In Schleff, the police station was closed. In nearby mountains were members of the Army of Islamic Salvation. These fighters have gained a reputation for being ruthless, barbaric killers. From a base among the villages that pepper the hillside, they launched missions to murder. Slitting the throat is a favored method of execution. Organized into groups of about a hundred men, they travel around largely at will. Only an army helicopter can launch an attack. These men claim that the random killing of foreigners has succeeded in isolating and weakening the raging in Algiers. They blame foreign governments for providing the financial assistance which keeps the regime in power. Most fighters are armed with shotguns. About a third have automatic weapons stolen from the police. 
They have direct links with the political leadership in Algiers, but commanders here insist that no political decision can be made without consulting them. Among them, fighters from the rival armed Islamic group. In these mountains, both Islamic armies work together. The men who cover their faces travel unrecognized into cities to carry out their missions. These men share the same goal, to create an Islamic state in Algeria. A checkpoint run by the militants. It's a potent symbol of territory gained and a brazen challenge to the regime in Algiers. A truck passes through, carrying members of the armed Islamic group. There's a makeshift field hospital with a qualified doctor. Supplies are brought from Algiers. Nearby, a bomb factory with detonators, batteries and timers. Bombings have become an increasing feature of the violence of the Islamic groups. This makeshift bomb will be deadly. To cause maximum damage, the bomb maker puts pellets in the canister. The materials he uses are either stolen or bought in local shops. The fighters pride themselves on their self-sufficiency. As well as bullet belts, these soldiers make their own uniforms. They say their rebellion grew from nothing three years ago without the assistance of any foreign country. <laughs> Their communication center is in another hillside house. Uh, Ahmed, Ahmed. They have a small but functioning military infrastructure. Walls are lined with maps showing their troop deployment. They send their death threats on a fax machine and the computer stores information on their military strength. It's here that the Army of Islamic Salvation draws up the list of the men they plan to murder. Je dors euh, très difficilement, très préoccupé, et je me réveille le matin euh, extrêmement préoccupé, effectivement. Omar Belouchette is on that murder list. He's been forced to move and now lives in a protected area after an attempt on his life. Je vis dans une euh, profonde solitude. C'est terrible à assumer. Je, donc je ne vois pas mes, mes enfants, je les vois très irrégulièrement, je ne veux pas les, euh, les mettre en danger. Belachet is the editor of the El Watan newspaper. His articles condemn the violence of the Islamic militants. More than 20 journalists have already paid with their lives for what they've written. Every day, Omar Belouchette drives past the spot where the militants tried to kill him. It happened one morning as he dropped off his children near their school. C'est très dangereux de, 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 de faire un, un petit documentaire et de sortir. On peut pas rester plus de, de deux minutes. Hein. 
Moi, je l'ai vu venir parce que là, je regardais mes enfants. Euh, ma fille ne voulait pas fermer la porte, donc je me suis poussé pour euh, tirer la, la porte. Et donc, j'ai vu une personne venir derrière moi. J'ai compris que c'était pour moi et euh, elle venait en courant jusqu'ici. Elle, elle a sorti son arme. Mais avant cela, j'avais déjà, vu, j'avais déjà mis la, la première. J'avais commencé à, à, à partir. Donc, quand elle est arrivée ici, la voiture l'a bousculée. Et elle, a, elle est partie. Euh, elle a tiré sur, sur la voiture. Elle n'a pas pu me toucher. Parce que là, généralement, il tue, euh, il tue les gens en, assis dans, le, dans, le, dans la voiture euh, en touchant la tête. At the newspaper's offices, journalists hide their faces. Few, if any, carry their press cards with them. Voilà. Donc, il y a des lettres en arabe, en français. Euh, Omar Belouchet euh, has received dozens of threats sent by fax or by post. The armed groups have warned that those who fight them with the pen will die by the sword. Et là, il y a une lettre, euh, une lettre avec ma photo. Et puis, euh, tu vas rejoindre les ennemis du peuple algérien, Tahar, les Chergou, les athées. Euh, la preuve des juifs et sionistes vont vous honorer euh, dès le mois prochain. Et là, ils disent euh, les com le communisme est mort et enterré. Et vous, vous êtes mort et vous serez enterré incessamment. Donc, euh, ils ont, ils ont, ils, euh, je devais être tué il y, a, il y a très longtemps, je suis encore en vie, grâce à Dieu. A middle class family home in Algiers. It's an unlikely setting to find the man the police accuse of helping to draw up the list of murder victims. Salah Sidoun was a successful surgeon. Now he's under constant threat of arrest. He denies making a death list, but he sympathizes with the Islamic fighters. Fearing for his family, he claims brutality from the state is a greater evil. Je comprendrais peut-être un jeune dans la rue qui n'a reçu aucune éducation, qui n'a reçu aucune formation, qui a été frustré pendant toute sa vie, qui a son horizon bouché, qui prend les armes pour essayer de se venger. À la rigueur, je dirais, je la prouve pas. Mais je le comprendrai. Mais que des autorités, que l'État utilise la torture comme moyen de gestion politique, exécute des citoyens pour essayer de terroriser ces, cette population, moi je trouve ça indécent. The doctor still works occasionally. The police say he sometimes treats militants injured in battle. Dr. Sidom is motivated by a belief that Algeria's war of independence betrayed its original goal of creating an Arab-speaking Islamic state. He has declared a second war of liberation. Il ne s'agit nullement d'une guerre civile. Il s'agit d'une véritable guerre qui se passe entre un peuple opprimé pendant 32 ans, privé de ses libertés, et un système dictatorial oppresseur. Voilà la réalité du problème. Algeria's struggle for independence from France in the 1950s lasted nearly eight years. It was a brutal and savage anti-colonial war. Over a million Algerians died in the fighting. Both the French army and the independence movement were responsible for atrocities. Torture was widespread. A culture of violence had been introduced to Algeria. The French had ruled Algeria for more than a century. Its way of life had taken root alongside the mainly Arab culture. And European attitudes and traditions remained long after the colonial power had gone. La France est partie en 62, mais elle a laissé ses enfants ici. Elle a laissé ses enfants. Et ce sont eux qui ont gouverné l'Algérie sur tous les plans. Et qui ont occupé tous les postes stratégiques.
In the relative safety of beaches near Algiers, evidence of the liberal culture so hated by the Islamic militants. This is a haven for Algeria's elite, who are usually happier adopting European rather than Arabic values. Occasionally, Algeria's two traditions are side by side. The area is called the Club des Pins, a secure enclave where those under threat have moved and live under constant guard. The regime has brought 400 portable homes here. Still in their packaging, they'll soon house the families of government workers who live in areas where they cannot be protected. It's a government in retreat, but one prepared for a long conflict against the Islamic armies. In an underground safe house, a women's group is meeting. Most of the women here are from the educated elite and adopt a European lifestyle. They're aware that the European and Arab cultures clash most blatantly over a woman's role in society. There are thousands of women who share their fears. Zazi Sadu is a member of the group and known to the Islamic movement. Now she has to move daily from one secure place to another. Je vous disais, ça fait plusieurs mois que je n'ai pas de maison, et je pense que pour plusieurs mois je n'aurai pas de maison encore, parce que je me fais le pari que pour rester en vie, il faut que tous les jours je côtoie la mort, mais que tous les jours je la déchire. Je peux déposer mes affaires, me changer, prendre des affaires. Je vis mal. L'exercice au quotidien, c'est de rester en vie. Mais ce qui m'est le plus pénible, c'est de ne pas pouvoir aller où je veux. Euh, ce qui m'est le plus pénible, c'est de me retenir quand j'ai envie d'aller voir ma mère, de me retenir. Ça, c'est dur. Zazi is part of an increasingly belligerent alliance who believe there should be no compromise with an intolerant Islam. They are known in Algeria as the democratic forces, but their main concern is preserving liberal values, not democracy. Comment voulez-vous parler d'élections en Algérie quand tous les jours des centaines d'hommes et de femmes tombent? Comment vous voulez parler d'élections? Quand on sait, moi qui vous parle maintenant, qui, qui envoie mon image à travers une télévision, je ne sais pas si je pourrais vivre dans deux, trois semaines. Contre l'intégrisme, il n'y a pas d'argument de raison, il n'y a pas de partage de pouvoir. Il faut lui mener une lutte implacable, parce que eux ne laissent aucune chance à la vie. Vous tournez la tête, vous baissez les bras, on vous tue. The conviction that terrorism can only be countered by force is the message passed on to young recruits at the police training school. But during the past year, these men watched their own regime try to make a deal with the militants. The president opened a forum for dialogue and gave concessions to the Islamic movement in the hope that the armed groups would lay down their guns. But the president's attempts at a compromise failed. He was backed by a faction within Algeria's army who believed the only way to end the fighting was to make a deal with the Islamic Salvation Front. But the front's leaders gave nothing in return. That prompted hardline generals to warn that further compromise would lead to catastrophe. Si une bonne partie de l'armée décide de faire alliance avec les, les islamistes, il est évident qu'il va y avoir des divisions à l'intérieur de l'armée. Ça, c'est la chose à, à craindre le plus. Et par contre, s'il y a des divisions, 
tous les dérapages au sein de l'armée, tous les dérapages dans ce cas, dans ce cas de figure sont possibles. Ça peut mener à, à une situation explosive et ça peut rapidement déborder. Dans ce cas de figure, il ne faut pas avoir peur des mots, ça peut mener vers la guerre civile. Euh, on l'écrit, on le dit. C'est une, c'est une, c'est une voie suicidaire pour l'Algérie. Moderates on both sides had tried to find common ground, but there was none. These young cadets are joining the police force committed to continue the violent struggle against militant Islam. The hardliners are back on charge, and they have the support of another powerful group. Algeria's fiercely anti-fundamentalist Berber minority. There are more than seven million Berber speakers in Algeria. Most live in an area known as Kabylia, to the east of Algiers. Assignment travelled to the Berber's political capital, the town of Tiziouzou. In the surrounding mountains, there was evidence of an ecological tragedy. <laughs> Acres of forest have been burned. Mile after mile of charred remains. The locals spoke of how the security forces burnt the woodlands to try to flush the militants from their hideouts. The journey continued through Bejea and then on to the small town of Azazga. There, another murder, a Berber politician. <laughs> Awushtu Mohand was gunned down by fundamentalists. Though devoutly Muslim, Berbers have retained a culture distinct from Algeria's Arabs. The Berbers have been more open to influences from abroad, especially France, than the Arab majority. Now they're a target for the militants. They feel as threatened by the fundamentalists as the regime itself. Some in the army believe the Berbers could play a more active role in the fight against fundamentalism. Berber leaders say they've had enough. Berber women do not attend the funeral of men. From afar, they watch and suffer. Armed guards defend a nearby Berber village. The village was recently attacked by Islamic militants. A dozen attackers were either killed or seriously hurt. Since then, the village has been under constant guard. Forty years ago, these Berber villages witnessed some of the worst fighting in the independence war. Now, some of the men who fought the French army in these hills have picked up the gun again. The head of the village militia was a commander in the independence army. 
One of them Manish Allah. Now, Sadiq Wasalim says he can get whatever guns he needs, mostly from government supplies, to confront a new enemy. These men will fight rather than live under an Islamic government. Aujourd'hui, il nous tue. Aujourd'hui, il tue. Il tue tout le monde. Il tue des innocents, des, des gamins, des, 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 des vieux, des vieillards. Euh, ils ont découpé même des, des êtres humains. Donc, euh, qui aura confiance à eux Demain, c'est prendre le pouvoir. to the Islamic militants while getting nothing in return. The Berbers have a long tradition of village democracy and are suspicious of central authority. They believe an Islamic government in Algiers would impose an alien culture upon them. Their leaders compare the intolerance of fundamentalist Islam with a new form of fascism. Est-ce que le fascisme à travers le monde a été combattu avec des arguments Le fascisme, ça je voudrais qu'on l'enregistre. Le fascisme, on ne peut pas le combattre avec des arguments. On le combat avec des armes. Une majorité s'est exprimée en faveur d'un parti donné. Respectant cette majorité, c'est ça la démocratie. C'est la majorité qui, dé, qui, 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 qui dirige. Et la minorité s'incline devant cette majorité. Or, là, à quoi on assiste À une démocratie à l'algérienne. Hein, à l'algérienne. C'est la, la majorité qui s'incline devant une minorité. Certains de nos compagnons de lutte ont été tués. D'autres ont été torturés, d'autres sont actuellement en prison. Mais nous continuerons le combat. In the mountains, the bomb maker recites from the Quran. The cultures that shaped Algeria's past and lived uneasily together since the nation's independence are at war. Here, there is no talk of compromise, only of victory.